Good afternoon. It's three o'clock on Wednesday. Good afternoon. And welcome to another installment of Gaming and Holland webinar series. I see more people joining the Zoom webinar here today. Thank you for joining us. Today's topic is keys for effective player retention in regulated online gaming, which is a partial preview of the upcoming online gaming management masterclass with a Dutch focus. We'll more about it later. Next slide, please. Before we kick off today's webinar, I would like to thank our strategic partners and sponsors. Without their invaluable support, we will not be able to do this. Thank you very much. As always, our webinars are interactive. If you would like to ask questions to our speakers, please submit yours through the Slido app. It's very simple. Scan the QR code on your screen or visit slido.com and enter the event codes GIH. That's GIH. Next, select the Q&A tab on the top of the screen to submit your questions. You can do that while uh, our presenters are doing their presentation. So we have the questions ready. Uh, at the end of their contribution. Next slide, please. I would like to introduce by our today's speakers. With us today from Las Vegas and Boston, how appropriate Las Vegas, we have Jason Rosenberg and Itzik Akiva. Jason and Itzik have a combined 35 years of experience and welcome gentlemen in providing training and advice to dozens of gambling companies in regulated and emerging markets, including Dutch market leaders, Nederlandse Loterij and Holland Casino. Formerly of the Totally Gaming Academy, Jason and Itzik are here today to tell us more about effective player retention in regulated online gaming. Jason, good morning. Very good morning to you. Morning. And Itzik, over to you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, William, and uh, it's a really exciting times to be here and it's finally happening. The Dutch market is finally regulating. We've been waiting for that one for a long, long time. And uh, definitely an exciting development in, in one of the markets that I personally like the most. So today, really, uh, we're going to show a preview uh, in the limited time that we have, a preview of uh, the retention and engagement uh, uh, session that we teach uh, as part of the online gaming management masterclass and this uh, training that we have which we'll talk about a little bit later uh, is specifically uh, altered and customized to uh, focus on the dutch market and it, its own specificities next slide please so the first thing that we want to talk about uh, some, some general comments on how we influence retention and it may sound obviously a little bit obvious i would say that it's a lot cheaper to retain or to reactivate a player than to acquire a new one this sometimes may be a change for people that uh, operated in less regulated market where it's a lot about acquisition and players are in abundance we're moving on into regulated markets High, com highly competitive markets uh, with many licenses anticipated to participate in the market. And now we're all fighting for the same players and we really need to do our best in order to retain them. We cannot spend a lot of money and too much money on acquisition. So obviously it is essential to invest in proper CRM strategy in order to not leave money on the table. Let's uh, move to the next slide. We want to emphasize, first and foremost, that there's a lot of elements that influence player retention. It's not just a result of our retention efforts. Things like your product, your customer service, any type of interaction, the, the, the low time of your, of your uh, website, the, the adaptability to mobile, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of things along the way that will influence retention. Today, we'll mainly touch on the classical retention tactics, promotions, etc., that will influence that. We also want to make sure that we remember that it's always best to aim for earning loyalty rather than paying for it, especially in the Dutch market, which will present uh, several uh, 
hurdles, challenges, limitations. We'll, we'll find the right naming for it in time in terms of what we can do and offer to players. But really, uh, the more we can create that attachment uh, uh, from the players without paying for it over time, that's going to be key for us. The next stuff, uh, the next step that we should consider is basically when we review the mix of um, activities that we offer, the tactics that we, we want to engage in, uh, we normally uh, look at a distinguishment between two types. They fall into those categories. They're either public or they are personal. And this is where we need to put a little bit of an asterisk next to the word personal, specifically in the Dutch market. The regulation in the Dutch market um, presents some limitations on what we can offer personally to a player based on their individual gaming behavior. So the moment the player is in our system and we know about them, there's a limit to what we can do in order to influence their behavior, be it uh, the type of bonus that we offer to them, the timing of the bonus, etc. These are still early days in interpreting these regulations. Okay, so all, all the time there's regulations and then there's an element of understanding what the true meaning that's going to be accepted by everybody. We're in that phase right now. So we still need to properly understand what it's going to be. And we will definitely uh, discuss that uh, as we uh, uh, proceed with this presentation. Next slide, please. Lastly, player segmentation and profiling is key in whatever we do. Okay, uh, this will ensure that we can properly deliver engaging, targeted, and relevant and effective messages. This is key. This is something that we all care about everywhere we go. We always want to make sure that whoever communicates with us meet those criteria. So, uh, next slide, please. We do that. We have a lot of data in, in online gaming. We can do a lot of segmentation, sometimes even too much segmentation and we can create a lot of profiles. We do that based on a lot of components. The point here is that even if you cannot or will not be able to fully leverage those segments and profiles in order to offer bonuses or promotions, you can definitely use that to your advantage in order to communicate things that people care about, be it in the type of images, be it in the content that you provide them, be it in the timing and the devices. So there's a lot of other things. Basically, the restrictions in the Dutch market that do not mean that your segmentation and profiling is not going to be uh, effective. So this is kind of a, a quick uh, background before we jump into the actual tactics. And this is where I'm going to hand it over to Jason. I will refer to him sometimes as Wolf. This is how people in the industry know him. It's a long story. Uh, we won't get into it now. But the first tactic that we'll discuss are the variety of promotions that we can offer. Uh, next slide. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just uh, as I said, once we do our segmentation and we, we do all these other steps, uh, these are some of the tools that we're going to use for retention. When we talk about promotions here, um, we are going to, uh, they all fit into, in general, all the categories that we're going to go through. There's variants, but they pretty much all fall into these categories. So we're going to just start. The first one we see uh, that we use is a leaderboard. Leaderboard promotions are... Uh, they rank players in order based on how well they do in something. And most of the time, we're looking at uh, a leaderboard promotion will be based, uh, for example, on uh, the most uh, on the most amount of wagers will earn the points and they're ranked in order. The problem with doing it this way is that you have um, you're alienating most of your database. Your high stakes players might be uh, the ones winning this all the time, and so all of your uh, mid and low stakes players they really uh, are alienated right from the beginning, and they don't want to participate. So it's it's actually better to do things uh, either on the uh, have another leaderboard for number of wagers, but the best way to really do this is what we call a ratio formula. So uh, it's basically the highest spin win divided by the amount that you wagered, and that ratio will be what shows on the leaderboard. The next one we want to talk about is races and chases. Uh, races and chases uh, they're very similar. The difference is this: in a race promotion. The first X amount of players to achieve Y will receive Z. 
It's going to be the first people to get it, the first person or the first 10 or five. Uh, on a chase, it's anybody that achieves, uh, any player who achieves Y will receive Z. Our example that we have here uh, is a race. And if somebody makes it to level 40, based on how you would earn points on this particular site, that person will get 10,000 uh, euros in cash. Uh, we're going to move on actually to tournaments. Uh, and I'm really sorry we have to go this fast because I'd love to spend, this is this is where I geek out and I'd really like to spend a lot of time on this. So uh, tournaments, sorry. Uh, tournaments require an opt-in or an entry and uh, you know, uh, tournament players will get a certain number of spins or a certain amount of time to, uh, to really gather as many chips as they possibly can. And uh, the most chips at the, at the end uh, of the promotion, they're going to win uh, the uh, the prizes and there'll be a leaderboard to show that like we have in our example. Tournaments are a fantastic retention tool. Uh, they're a great way to expose players to new content. Uh, there's definite side action on, on what else they're playing while they're on there. And we can cross them over into new wager verticals. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the random, the next one we're gonna have is a, a random draw or a raffle. It's kind of exactly, uh, it is exactly as it sounds. Uh, these are just uh, various methods to have a random draw at the end of the week or the end of the month. Um, we, there can be, uh, entries can be rewarded in multiple ways. It could be for anyone that makes a deposit or everyone that joins in a week or uh, cer every certain number of wagers you get an entry. There's various mechanisms that we can award uh, random draw tickets and, and we have one and the prizes can be one large prize or it can be multiple small prizes. We definitely want to talk about experiences. Experiences are very important in the sense that we're going to be offering some things that money can't buy. So for example, we have an example here of a poker tournament that happened underwater. That actually happened. Uh, we have all sorts of different types of these, but it could be uh, uh, you work with a with a, a celebrity or a, an influencer or a professional footballer, and maybe you get to have a Skype call with them now because of uh, COVID. Well, you can offer that, and that's something that that you just can't buy. Uh, these are great uh, great incentives for people to come back and try to win prizes. Another one we want to definitely talk about is insured and uh, large prizes. Here we have. Um, you, you very easily in a regulated market are able to ensure a large price. Say you want to try, you, you want to give away a million dollars. You want to offer that opportunity to your players. You can ensure that. So should somebody win it, you don't have, you've already paid the premiums for the insurance on a per attempt basis. And if the best thing that actually could happen is somebody wins it. So you get that, all of that PR. Uh, another thing that we do is with large prizes. Here, these are, are usually non-cash prizes, things like a cruise or a holiday. Uh, the example we have here is, is to win a cruise around the Mediterranean. Uh, if the player doesn't want to accept that prize, that's fine. We can associate a cash equivalent and give them that cash equivalent. Uh, the idea when we're creating these promotions is that they're going to pay for themselves many times over. So it's okay for us to give away that prize. We want, we want the PR to show the winners to everybody else. And uh, I do wanna to go to the next slide, please. And we'll finish up with a couple that, that, will, that are very, very, very common. So we have enhanced odds in sports. Here, uh, an enhanced odds promotion is going to be, uh, here we see Barcelona and Liverpool both to win. Normally that would pay four to one, but for this particular promotion today, you'll get 4.75 back. So we're, we're showing it, we're giving uh, increased value for the, for the wager. And this keeps players coming back to see what specials, uh, what the specials are on a daily or a weekly basis, depending on the promotion. Generally, these promotions have a maximum wager amount, but while the players are there, they're looking at new promotions and they're making other bets. So it's a great retention tool. Very similar, we have free spins. This is another way for us to give players some extra value. Uh, while free spins are usually given to acquire new players, they, they do make a great retention tool. Uh, we can give free spins away uh, for uh, anyone that makes a specific reload deposit or anyone that uh, makes a deposit using a particular deposit method. They're definitely part of other promotions. Uh, we can use them uh, 
after a customer service complaint, we can give some players free spins for their trouble. And they also can be part of, uh, of your loyalty program. So speaking of loyalty programs, I'm gonna turn it back over to Itzik and uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so we went over the promotions, which are a form of a public uh, uh, offering. Everybody gets to see them. They're offered to pretty much everybody or to large segments in your audience. Uh, we're gonna turn over to another uh, public offering and it's a very uh, public uh, commitment as well, which are the loyalty programs. A lot of the time people call loyalty programs VIP programs. Uh, that may be the name, the type of uh, uh, wording that you want to use when you, you present it to the players. But we need to remember that for the most part, this is not for VIPs. This is something that is intended as a public program for everybody to essentially understand the relationship between them and your brand. You do this, you get that. This is a program that we would like to participate in with airlines, with credit cards, with a lot of other type of programs. This is what you need to do, and this is what you're going to get in return. This is our commitment. As such, uh, this is also a very, very uh, delicate form of liability for us. If we mess the calculation, if we offer something that is uh, not going to pay for itself, we can incur a lot of debt, and it's always going to be harder to roll it back. Right. And so we always need to think of ways to increase the value rather than go strong and have to roll back because the, that adverse effect is going to be really, really devastating. So normally what we'll see here is some kind of an escalation chart where people will have to do something over a certain period of time, be it uh, earn points or, or, or make certain wagers or qualify to reach a certain level. And that level will normally give them all kinds of benefits. Now, a lot of the time, it will associate those benefits with bonuses. Like I said, in the Dutch market specifically, we still need to properly understand what can be offered and at what level. Okay, on one hand, this is public, um, this is not going to change much, so it may qualify as something that is valid for the market. Uh, I'm, I'm being very careful here because a lot of the time with our experience in, in regulated markets, there's the, the dry wording of the law and then there's what's going to be deemed acceptable by the regulator and there's sometimes a gap and that's something that we're investigating right now and it's going to be a process, so that's a learning curve. Uh, so. The idea here is to go through the tiers and understand this is what I need to do. This is what it will give me. And obviously you get the sense as a player of being a VIP, of being important, of being appreciated for your business. Therefore, you will concentrate most of the business with one site or with a few sites rather than with many of them. Um, let's go to the uh, next slide. There could be different types of perks, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can that you give in a in a loyalty program beyond bonuses. So even if you cannot do bonuses, you can still run a good proper loyalty program. In fact, those things will probably cost going to cost you less than just loading with bonuses. Remember, we said better to earn the loyalty rather than pay for it all the time. So things like. Uh, I'll give example, free withdrawals or expedited, expedited payouts or uh, birthday gifts, anything that will show that player, hey, we remember you, we think about you, we know you, you're not just anybody. Uh, those things will play a major, major role in the way uh, we, we do things. Point store, so a lot of the time we don't want to just associate the loyalty programs directly with wagering or with losses. So we it's a volume game, right? We give people points for volume. We don't just give them points for their losses. So therefore, we will often have a point store or a way for them to exchange those points into other things. Uh, we'll move on to the next uh, tactic. Next slide, please. Right, which is VAP management. Now, a lot of the time, people will confuse the two. They'll call loyalty programs VIP programs, 
and they will not properly understand what, v, what VAP management stands for. So the VAP management, uh, in other words, will be your, uh, let's call it your, your white glove, your concierge service towards your major profit generator. Now, if promotions and loyalty program were a public commitment, this is a private tactic, a personal one, okay? This is not something that's going to be announced on your site. It may say, hey, you may qualify for, qualify for this VIP treatment, but it will not list what you get if you are deemed to be one, okay? And as such, this is also something that is really up to you to decide and change what you do and how much you give and, and what is the way to treat your VIPs. But the, the logic behind it is this. We have our major profit generators. A lot of the time we're talking about a really small percentage of players that will make up for even 50% of your revenue, depending on your size, the size of your operation. When you lose one of them, you will feel that. So the first thing is really to ensure that you have a concentrated effort to keep those uh, uh, top players engaged and loyal. Next slide, please. How do we do it? Uh, we have uh, dedicated VIP account managers, okay? These are people on your side that are tasked, first of all, to monitor. That's the first thing that you wanna do. I do not want surprises. I need to know what these major contributors are doing. Before I even decide to intervene or to communicate, I wanna know what they do. And then based on those things, and those people really need to know a lot about those players, their gaming behavior, what is normal for them? Where do they live? What's their lifestyle? What, what do they enjoy? What do they not enjoy? How to contact them? What to communicate with them? Uh, and based on that, based on this knowledge, this information that we have, we can create a personalized course of action. Now, if you can give them bonuses or gifts, we can always come and say, hey, Miss or Mister, we saw that you had a great experience or, or uh, a bad experience yesterday, and we acknowledge that. We reach out to them and we provide a bonus. Hey, we left you something in your account if we are allowed to do that, or we can do other things, uh, gifts, etc. But sometimes we don't need to even incentivize them. We can just call, give a personal message, uh, uh, acknowledge personal events. Hey, there's a birthday. Hey, your son graduated. All kind of things like that, again, make a much, much stronger connection uh, with our VIP players. And again, they are very crucial for our business. We're kind of running out of time, so I'm going to move on uh, back to Wolf uh, to talk about things to consider and some best practices. So now uh, when we put all this together, we really have some questions that we need to ask ourselves uh, or just things that we need to, to really think about or look at. So the first one is finding the optimal number of promotions, uh, promotional offers for your operation. Uh, here, we need to find the, uh, the, this balance. Uh, we can't have the same three things uh, every single month over a month. We also don't wanna have the clutter and confusion of 20 different offers and promotions uh, where players are trying to figure out what the terms and conditions for everything are. We've got to find a healthy balance in between. Uh, what is the length, you know, the length and the frequency of promotions? Here again, we can't just have one monthly uh, or two monthly promotions and expect that the players are going to stay engaged. Uh, our uh, the players, they demand fresh promotions in exchange for, for their engagement. We've got to keep, we have to rotate our promotions uh, frequently. Uh, the third point here is rewarding multiple segments of players and not over rewarding the same top players. Many players will see sites and they look at the promotions and they think, well, only the top players are gonna get this and I really don't wanna play here. I'm certainly not gonna stay here. We wanna make sure that the promotional budget is really spread over all segments of our, of our uh, ecosystem. Uh, ongoing competitive analysis, this is very important. Here, uh, we definitely wanna look at what our competitors are doing. Are we competitive with them? Are we over competitive? Are we not competitive enough? We definitely want to see what, what everybody else is doing in our market. And lastly, managing liability. Uh, here, again, when we design promotions, 
We definitely want to be doing them to where they pay for themselves many times over. Sometimes we'll have one that we want to run as a loss leader. We know we're going to lose a certain amount of money on it, but we know that in exchange for that, we're going to get a much larger amount of wagers from something else. Uh, we have, can give several examples of that. The point here is that uh, we definitely need to always be checking our terms and conditions. We want to make sure that we are not opening ourselves up for excessive liability when we're designing a, a promotion. So that's going to be the end of, uh, of the educational parts of this. Uh, what we do want to do is uh, get, move into questions and answers. Before we get into that, though, while we're waiting for everyone's questions and answers, uh, sorry, their questions to come in, uh, we are going to just do a brief overview of the course that we will be uh, putting on here shortly. Uh, it's a uh, sorry. Next slide, please, and we'll we'll start with that. Yeah. So so uh, like we said, this was a very very condensed version of uh, of a session that normally takes uh, at least three hours, uh, where we dive deeper into the details. So uh, really, what is the what is the concept? What are we trying to do here? Um, we've been teaching the online gaming management masterclass. Uh, for several years now, hundreds of people, mainly in regulated markets and, and jurisdictions that are uh, in the process of regulating. And this is really meant for online gaming uh, executives and managers. So people that will oversee the operations, people that are a decision making uh, uh, position in their organization. Uh, and what we do in this, and we'll go over the agenda, is really go over all the elements, all the components of an online gaming operation uh, to a point that you have strong enough knowledge, strong enough con confidence to ensure that you're able to uh, run this operation properly, that you know all the elements and how they influence each other. This is kind of a complex ecosystem that you always have. You move one thing, it's going to influence the others. Uh, we have uh, a one that is specifically uh, customized, like we said, for the Netherlands, uh, for the Dutch market. Uh, this one is scheduled for March, uh, the week of March 26th. It's basically five days, three hours a day, because we're doing it online and there's only so much that one can be in front of a computer. Uh, it's going to be a combination of us as your trainers together with our colleagues from Gaming in Holland. So you're going to have that local flavor and uh, combined with our experience, if you want to have more information, masterclass.gaminginholland.com is where you can find it. Next slide, please. And quickly over the agenda so that you know what to expect. Uh, we work it down uh, into sessions. We start with the ecosystem and gaming economy and revenue generation. This is really to ensure that everybody is on the same page and understands the basics what are the components and how they influence each other before we dive deeper in. Uh, how we make money. Sometimes people don't always understand that. Session three is really more about the protections. So we're talking about operators and players. We will uh, always uh, refer to it as responsible gaming, but there's other sides to it uh, like uh, KYC, identity checks, fraud, anti-money laundering, some of it required by law, some of it are best practices. We dive deep into that specifically towards what's required in the Dutch market. Session four is one of the most uh, important ones, I think, uh, bonus management. There's a lot, especially for people that are newer to online gaming. There's a lot of uh, weird, unique things in the bonus uh, in, in the way we offer bonuses and we manage them in online gaming this can be a great great tool for you this can be also something that uh, will cost you a lot of money so we go over a lot of those things there's a little bit of math involved in it we have to warn you in advance next slide please uh, we then dive into user acquisition but not just uh, the channels, but also the technology that you need in order to properly manage your money. And then player retention, the sample you saw here today, it's a lot more expanded than that. And we go over talking about churn calculation, lifetime value, etc. cetera. Uh, session seven is really about business planning, taking all of those components and understanding how they all align uh, how you forecast, how do you plan your, your realistic business uh, uh, plan, 
talking about product management specifically in regards to what's going to be uh, working in the Dutch market and then how it all lined up on a gaming balance sheet. And the last session is more of a workshop style, which is uh, taking and planning your next steps. So in regards to each individual uh, operation, understanding what it is that you need to prioritize, what are your gaps? Uh, and this is where we try to give a more personal support or, or a kind of consultation for each one of the activities. So that's uh, in short, uh, the course agenda. And like we said, uh, next slide, please. Uh, you can obviously reach out to us or to the gaming and all and guys with any questions that you have about the content now, about the training, about anything in general. Uh, it's been our pleasure and we'll be happy to take on your uh, uh, questions right now. Exactly. Thank you, Jason. Wonderful. And thank you, Itzik. Thank you. Very, very insightful and a lot to um, digest. So let's see if there's any questions from the audience. Just to remind you, uh, if you go to the Slido app, you can download that at slido.com or in your app store, enter the event code GIH. You can participate in the Q&A here. And we have some questions coming up and we will highlight these to our speakers here today. First question here from um, the audience, Jeroen Vekeroos. Which definition of retention are you using, uh, Itzik and uh, Wolf? That, that, I'll, I'll take that. That's a good question because uh, our definition of retention should not really matter. Your definition of retention specific to your uh, operation is the one. So essentially, uh, and this is some of the things that we go over in the course, there are different ways to evaluate your efforts. So at the end of the day, you launch all of these, uh, all of these uh, actions and each one of them, be it your promotions, be it your, uh, your bonuses in general, be it your VAP management and your loyalty program, they're all gonna translate into certain KPIs. Each one of them individually will have their own KPIs and then you're gonna have your general ones. Specifically, for example, for loyal for, for VAP uh, program or VAP management, I should say, uh, we're really looking at uh, understanding how many of those VAPs were retained as VAPs at the same level of, of uh, 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 productivity or behavior or, or wagering uh, within the next period. When it comes to uh, other more general KPIs, we'll be looking at calculating different levels of churn. Uh, and here we're talking about what is a churn for a specific cohort, which will also be translated into uh, lifetime value, et cetera. And what is your overall churn in the operation as a need to understand the health of your uh, overall activity, okay? Because then you mix reactivating old players with more recent players, etc. At the end of the day, we always do some things with an objective in mind. They need to do more, they need to engage more, they need to communicate more, they need to, need to wager more, and there are different ways to do that. It can be, a retain, one definition of retention can be, they will play more. Another one can be, they'll return more. They'll return every day because we designed our promotion to make sure that they are back for, to play that tournament every day at lunchtime, for example. And we're gonna evaluate that with specific things. So I know it's not the numbers that you were looking maybe uh, in the question, but this is certainly uh, yeah. KPIs are, and, and definitions are super important. Great, thank you, Itzik. Um, very, very insightful. So let's move to the next um question from the audience here anonymous uh question here you mentioned earning the loyalty rather than paying for it could you expand on that jason sure it? yeah it's a great great question um when we talk about earning loyalty rather than paying for it uh the promotions that we just talked about all of those things we're we're, we're paying for that loyalty earning loyalty though is very simple to do and that can be done with really good customer service. If the players know that these people are gonna really take care of me, they've earned my loyalty. So it can be through customer service, 
could be through ease of, of payment processing or ease of withdrawal. These are service related pieces that we're, we're able to really show that we care about these customers rather than throwing money at them. That's what that means. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly throw in a, a, one other element, uh, which I think is going to be super important in the Dutch market, and that's localization. The language, mm -hmm. the nuances, uh, if those people will truly understand that this company is Dutch, or at least will come across as Dutch for them, that's going to be a major, major way to earn their loyalty rather than something that will feel like a Google translation. Okay, so loyalty and uh, earn loyalty by uh, localization. Thank you, Itzik. So, let's see if there's a next question for you guys here. So, what is the use here, question? What is the use of segmentation and profiling if the regulation does not allow targeted bonuses? Looking at both of you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start just real quick. Uh, how we really use segmentation and profiling, it, it doesn't have to be just all about what bonuses we're giving players. That, that's the point is we need to know what our players are doing. And if we need to tailor our product offering to uh, the largest segments or the largest profiles that we have, that we're able to use that information to customize our product. Uh, so it's, it's people want to be constantly coming back to play there uh, is really the answer of that. It's like if you want if you have anything else to add. Uh, yeah, it, there's a, lot, it's about, it's there's a about, lot to add on this. <laughs> it's really about knowing them. And like I think I alluded to when I started at the beginning, uh, you can use that. It doesn't have to translate into a segment that's going to get uh, a, a different promotion, a different bonus. It can be translated to a segment that gets the offering uh, in a specific way, uh, in, in yeah. a push message rather than in an email or that will see a sports image rather than seeing a casino image or a live dealer image versus a slot image. Those type of nuances will make it a lot more relevant for the audiences. Yeah, okay. Great, I think we lost you there for a second, but uh, fine. Okay, um, sorry. Last, no, no, it's your, it's uh, the mysteries of internet sometimes. Quick question here, we'll also get back to that in my, in my end note here. What makes this an, an L-focus course? Uh, I'll just start. I just, uh, first of all, uh, we've partnered with Gaming in Holland, and so we're able to, uh, they'll be working with us, but we've dived quite deep in as well. Uh, we'll be tailoring a lot of these topics specifically of the do's and don'ts or the what can we do or what we can't do uh, in the Netherlands market. Uh, a lot of the course content that we have is generalized for all markets. We'll really be dialing this into uh, for, for specific examples of how this how online gaming will work in the Netherlands. Yeah. It's like, do you, yeah so it's kind of, it's comes to the resolutions of uh, yeah. when we look at the balance sheet, it's going to be specifically with the numbers that are relevant to the Dutch market. Uh, when it comes to the restrictions on each of the modules, when it comes to your integrations, uh, when it comes to uh, your product protection, what you have to do, what you uh, advise to do, all of those things will take into consideration the regulation. Everything in this course starts with the regulation. This is our our, our, our manual, this is our Bible, so to speak. And we start with that and we interpret everything else based on it. Yeah, so completely localized. And I, I seem I remember also payments and product are also part of it. And I think yes, we have time for a quick, quick last question. If there's a last question left from the audience, if not, we'll move on. So quick last question. Uh, is VIP management a viable practice if the regulation forbids personal bonuses. I think you already uh, answered it for a part, uh, Jason, but could you maybe elaborate on that? Sure. Uh, it, when, in VIP management, uh, yeah, we might not be able to give personal bonuses, but as part of VIP management, maybe we're able to offer a, a personal phone number that somebody can call if they have, uh, uh, or we prioritize their customer service issues, or we have uh, different payment restrictions as far as the uh, the ease or, or the length of time it takes for us. Maybe they have priority in, in, uh, in payments. There's a lot of things that we can add 
to VIP management that have nothing to do with personal bonuses. Like it's said earlier, it's really the white glove feeling of these people are really taking care of me. Yeah, very clear. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as we run out of time, I think we have to wrap the Q&A here. Uh, if there's any leftover questions, we'll try to address these in the post-webinar uh, uh, little report that we are publishing, by the way, with, with the video that will be online tomorrow. Um, so let's wrap it here. Thank you, Jason. And thank you, Itzik, for getting up so early in the morning, for answering our questions yeah. and for your fantastic presentation. Thank you very much. Th thank um, you. And I will just say this. Sorry, one, one really quickly. Uh, in the course, we'll talk a lot slower. Uh, we, so you'll be uh, really able to uh, digest what we're saying. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Good, yeah. good that you mentioned that. Thank you, Itzik. Yeah. As mentioned before, this webinar is a partial, was a partial preview of what you can expect if you sign up for the online management masterclass with the Dutch Focus. This masterclass will be taught by our speakers of today with some additional local input from Tom De Bruyne and myself. Uh, the masterclass was specifically designed to expand your organizational knowledge base, especially if you're already have been successful in offering, for example, land-based gambling products, but lack hands-on experience in making it work for an online audience as well. If that is the case, this masterclass will help you gain a competitive advantage and add immediately to your bottom line. If you would like to sign up for this masterclass, please visit uh, masterclass.gamingholland.com. That's without the www. You also see that on the screen here. You can also point your camera right now to the QR code that you see on the left side of the screen and you will be guided to that uh, page. So masterclass.gaminginholland.com. Um, with this, we have come to the uh, next slide, please. We have come to the end of yet another Gaming in Holland webinar. I hope you find it useful. As always, let's keep in touch. If you have not signed up to our free newsletters and print magazines, please do so at signup.gaminginholand.eu. Just a last note here, we have a series of additional webinars coming up. Next week already, we have another webinar coming up about outsourcing requirements for operators and third-party suppliers. These webinars will feature an introduction by Netherlands Gambling Authority Chairman Renatsen. So don't miss it. For now, I want to wish you all goodbye and see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>